Can guys and girls be just friends? Oh, man. Either you're gonna date that person or you're not, so you might as well kind of put yourself out there because what did you do as a dude? to prepare to be a good boyfriend in your singleness? What are things that you worked on as a man to prepare to be a good husband and a good boyfriend? Hello everybody and welcome back to Happy and Healthy. I am your host, Janine Mapola. Actually, we are your hosts. We? Janine. And Caleb. Soon to be Ward. You know. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. If you go to Happy and Healthy podcast on Instagram, you'll see that she's only following two people. <laughs> and when we got, that was my most like, I think exciting moment in our like relationship was getting the follow from your Happy and Healthy. <laughs> yeah. Every day I wake up and I go to see if you've unfollowed me and you haven't. So I'm going to unfollow you after this podcast now. Alejandro, go and follow him. <laughs> she runs the account. <laughs> anyway, hi guys. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Janine. This is my fiance, Caleb Ward. And we are so excited to be back with another episode of Happy and Healthy. If you are new here, I post these every single Tuesday. I love to just chat about anything to hopefully better your life mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. But sometimes we just want to, we just want to hey, frick around. And financially. Financially. Yo, I do have an episode coming on finances. And this next season, we're going to... Level We're going to get the uh, the finances right. We actually are. Yeah. We, we've been working on that. So. So. <clears throat> in this month of July, I have been doing solo episodes. And you know what? The month is actually almost over. And I was going to do an entire episode by myself, but I've already filmed two today. And I was like, I want my fiance on this episode. Called in the backup. No, no, no. That wasn't backup. No, it's just your backup. It, oh, I yeah. called in the backup. Yeah. I'm like, Got it. You know, in Paul Blart. Remember Mall Cop? When yeah. He's fighting the girl in the in the in Victoria's <laughs> Secret, and he's like, "Back up!" I don't. Oh Back yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my favorite movie. It's oh, beside the point. It doesn't really know. matter. But that's so cute. Your teeth are white. Did you do something? No. No. You. I sure? think it's the lip gloss. I don't know. They weren't yellow before, but like they were a little. I whitened them. Let me see. They look eh, good. Thanks, baby. I called up. I called for backup, and along came Polly. Getting along came Caleb. And we were like, let's just shoot the sheesh shoot the and sit down and sheesh. talk. So I actually came with a purpose to talk about can guys and girls be friends? And I, we are going to address that. But I apologize to all the girls out there that I've been friends with. <laughs> and same thing to the guys out there. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Not that I was bad or anything, but I'm just kind of joking. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> So we're going to just kind of shoot the sheesh. We're going to talk about Caleb a little bit so you guys can get to know him. We're going to be interviewing him a little bit. And also, we're going to probably start with that topic. But I am going to do my very, very best this time to not interrupt you. <laughs> I am so sorry, everybody. I was re-watching the podcast and I was freaking cringing at myself. I was like, Janine, you idiot. Like, stop it. Because I noticed you would say something. I'm like, <laughs> I think it's I'm so sorry. I didn't even notice it really until I, I noticed it. Listen to it back. But the thing is, is we're just sitting down and we're talking. And I think it's hard for it's like I saw a couple of comments that were like, you can tell he's annoyed that she keeps interrupting him. And I'm like, you're not in my brain. Yeah, you like, tell him, babe. I, I'm Gucci. <laughs> I love if anyone's going to interrupt me. It, It'll be me. I'm so excited that it's you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because. I mean, it's like we're having a real life conversation. Like when we're in a real life conversation, we interrupt each other a lot yeah. because it's like you get a thought and you're like, wait, wait, hold on. And, and now we're like obviously on camera. And so I think that's always something that's interesting is like you see couples and you think that they're weird, but you're like, that's just how they are. And like, they're fine with that. And that's normal, you know, but I'm yeah. going to do my best to still not interrupt you. You're, you're killing it. You just do you. Listen, the haters help the algorithm. So Honestly, interrupt me this entire podcast. We'll no. get more comments. We'll get more people to listen. And, you know, it'll be great. Baby, I'm not I'm not a deceitful podcast. <laughs> Number one, what we're going to talk about is how has engagement been? So we've been engaged for a little over, we've been engaged for a month and four days. A month and four days. Honestly, it's flown by. It's been so much fun. Mm -hmm. I think we've only gotten into like one wedding argument. But other that was like week one too, yeah. right? Other yeah. than that, you've been like so chill. You've been so fun. I feel like 
So what we did was like week one, we were like, we don't even know where to begin. So I took us to uh, Staples, bought us a little marker board, and we just wrote out every little thing. Uh, what are these, baby? Did some mosquitoes bite you? got you? a little mosquito bite. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's one interruption. I'm sorry. I'm done. That's my one for the podcast. <laughs> That's one, people. Uh, uh, we have like one. a ticker on the podcast. It's like, ding. <laughs> Interruptions by Janine. That's funny. And uh, we wrote out everything. Wrote out the budget. I told her the budget week one. And I was like, okay, this is the dollar amount. And it was like, she didn't believe me that we could probably do it in that price point. But honestly, we're doing pretty well. I think we're, we really are. We're right at the budget. Um, we're actually trying to have a, like in today's day and age with weddings, I don't think that this budget is really like feasible, but we're believing that it will be. Listen, I'm just of the mindset of, I am not, I don't want to sacrifice my future. The w- weddings are important, but I'm also like, it's one day. All that I care about is our close friends are there. We have good food and we dance the night away. I don't think you need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. And I think that we're in a weird generation now where it's like, hey, actually do whatever you want to do. If you want to spend all that money for a wedding, that's cool. But I think that like you shouldn't sacrifice your own financial state to appease or to care about like what other people think. Agreed. Anyways, but it's been fun. I okay, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. No, because we, we just keep thinking like, well, obviously we want a dream wedding. Like I want a dream wedding. I've never had a wedding before. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. And then you realize how expensive weddings are and you're like, oh my gosh. And we're just trying to be like financially smart. And obviously we're really, really, really grateful. Mm-hmm. We do get brand deals. Like I'm super beyond grateful for that. But we are we are still paying a lot of our out of our own wallet. But what we keep thinking is we're like, okay, like if we spend $5,000, that's $5,000 that's taken away from a future house one day or if whatever, you know, so we just keep trying to like weigh the pros and cons. Like, is that worth it? Because that again, that takes away towards our house one day or whatever, you know? You know, my whole life I was thinking, I I want like three girls and one boy. I was like, I want to be a girl dad. I think we only need one girl now after planning a wedding. I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know that I think having three girls would ruin maybe our our retirement because it's insane they're like uh, i'm like we're looking for flowers and i look at a piece of flower i'm like how much is that flower like it's thirteen thousand dollars for a flower (laughs) for one flower okay but i i really hate to break it to you you don't get to decide if you're having a girl or not i'm kind of being (laughs) facetious i know i'm just just joking with you too because i'm like watch the lord give us four girls Uh, honestly that'd be great I know. I want a girl so bad. When do you want to have a kid? You want to have a kid like pretty quickly after we get married? Nope. Let's get let's have one on the no, honeymoon. No, no, Why no. Why not? He's he's kidding, y'all. That's not happening. I don't know. It's not happening. <laughs> Lord willing. <laughs> okay, yeah. but yeah, anyway, engagement really has been good. I think a lot of people were like, it's so hard and everyone everything's gonna suck and you guys are gonna fight. I'm like, we've been great. At least for now, we've been great. You've been, I feel like this engagement was going to be what you make, what you make it. But you know what? The wise words of Hannah Montana. Life's what you make Make it. it. So let's let's make make it rock. Make it rock. rock. So wedding season is what you make it. It is. Anyways. It's been good. It's been great. We've got a lot done in a month. So much done. Go us. My only concern is our wedding is in college football season. And so. But it's on a Sunday. I know. But the rehearsal's on a Saturday. So like Oklahoma State could be. So we might just have to like reschedule that if. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll reschedule the entire wedding for OSU. <laughs> but why don't we do that for Texas? Because Texas sucks. No, you and suck. Everybody knows it. <laughs> Texas is horrible. Oh, yeah, they are pretty bad. I think you have more Oklahoma people. No, following you than no, Texas no, no. People. If you're from Texas, comment down below. Shout out to my Oklahoma. Texans. Let's go Texas forever. And I know that most Oklahomans are boomers sooner, but honestly, it's still Ooh. better than Texas. That's so I'm an Oklahoma State Cowboy, so. I'll let it slide. So let's get into it, Janine. Let's get into it. Caleb, I have a Mrs. Ward. burning question. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I have a burning question for you. Can guys and girls be just friends? Oh, man. Because you've had some girlfriends, and you've hurt their feelings, and I've had some guy friends, and that kind of got messy, too. So I have, like, a couple thoughts. And so do I. I think if I would answer this question before we started dating, I would have been like, yeah, strictly it can be platonic. Um, And then from a guy's perspective, 
I think I've learned of how I did guy and girl friendships well, but I also didn't do it perfectly. Um, I think when a guy gets into a relationship with a girl that he loves and wants to be with, honestly, every girl he's been friends with in the past kind of doesn't matter anymore. Sounds bad, but like, you're kind of just like, this, this is my girl. I have all my guy friends. So I really don't need to have a ton of girlfriends. For me, that was like the boundary that I put up in a relationship was just like, I don't need to be having one-on-one conversations by myself um, at coffee shops or texting or, you know, always commenting on each other's stories. Like, I think when I was single, I just was like friends with whoever. And you kind of blur those lines of like, hey, I don't really like this person, but I like the emotional benefit of having a close girlfriend. You don't realize that's what you're doing when you're in it. Because you're kind of always like, okay, maybe this might work. Maybe it won't work. I think it gets complicated. Do I think there are guy and girl friendships that are fine? It's like, yeah. But every guy knows. Every guy knows that one dude who's friends with your girlfriend in the past, he's playing the long game. He's uh, he's always there. He just is like he's happens. A lurking. He's always looking. He's always sending that text message. He's always reply- replying to that story. I've been that guy before. Oh, so it's like, some tea. we know, like, there's a funny, like, t- I think Matt Rife on like, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he had yeah. a funny TikTok. He was like, he, he knows the formula. It's like, he knows, like, you know, when girls are like, yeah, like, we're just friends. We're He's just my friend. friend. He, I love him like a brother. Yeah. Which and, a lot of people or like, that. you don't understand our relationship. He's different. It's like, <laughs> he, Jake would never. And it's yeah, like. He doesn't like me like that. And then if you always go. Uh, so if you said right now, if you went up to Jake and you were like, hey, I like you, Jake. What would he say? Nine times out of 10, Jake is, is ready to go. Jake from State Farm? Um, or someone else? I think that joke's retired. No, I think it's going to be Brad. <laughs> we're going to bring it back. I think I have my own, um, you know, my 16-year-old girlfriend, you know, had a lot of guy friends and that really messed me up. So, you know, still, well, still, still healing from that. Well, we'll, we'll work on that one, babe. <laughs> so here are my thoughts. I think this is, it's an iffy conversation because I don't think that guys and girls can be best friends, but I do think that they can be friends, but it depends on how much you're communicating your boundaries, how much you're hanging out, what the conversations are looking like. Because either one, one of you feels something and the other one doesn't. Both of them feel something and they don't express it. Three, they both have feelings. They express mm-hmm. it, turns into a relationship. Someone like someone. Or four, both express it, mutually decide to be just friends. So it's an iffy thing because it's not black and white. It's not black and white, but I think both can mutually say, hey, we're not going to date each other. But we're going to act, I mean, I was guilty of this even before we started dating where you have these friendships that are like, nope, we're not dating, but you still, you act like you're dating. Yeah. You text like you're dating. You call like you're dating. Your only thing you're not doing is going on like a real date or like having a kiss or holding hands or whatever. So, okay. So I heard this phrase from my friend, Rachel Cheryl, she and I did that podcast, but she always says this and it, it like blew my mind. She said that men will take your attention without intention. Mm. Isn't that a bar? That's a bar. Also, it's a bar. If you're a girl who has a ton of guy friends, is that a red flag? I'm sorry, but like no guy, no guy would, they're not, I'm not saying that's going to like detour you from ever finding somebody, but I'm saying that like guys tend to like not want to be probably with a girl who is just constantly around guys. She's just constantly. You know, because you don't want to go into a situation where you're dating a girl and it's like, oh, I got to deal with all this competition. I got to be around all these dudes all the time. And um, so that can be and vice versa, probably. For sure. And I think I think also like how you that's why boundaries are so important when you're dating or when you're not dating is that when you do find somebody you do want to date that that girl isn't like your friend is like wait, I thought you liked me or like, wait, I thought we had something and then she feels confused. And I think the guy and girl friendship opens the ro- opens the door and leaves room for so many situationships to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's why a lot of people are like, wait, I'm like hurt by someone I never even dated because probably in your mind, you're like, oh, he's going to ask me out. He's for sure going to ask me out and he never does. And you're crushing the entire time or vice versa. The guy, yeah. the guy likes the girl and he's like, she'll never date me. Or she's like, he's never going to ask me out. And you get your heart broken. And so I almost feel like 
either you're going to date that person or you're not. So you might as well kind of put yourself out there because either you're going to marry them or you're not. And if, when yep. you get married, you're not going to be friends with them anyway, because you're not going to still stay with friends with that person really when you get married. So yeah. why not take the leap and say something? Well, but also, what do you think about that? There's also the other side of, I think for a, some guys perspective, it's like, I don't want to ruin like the friend group because you guys are all in one yeah. big friend group. Uh, but for me, I was kind of like, I'm not going to have this Today's episode is sponsored by Nutrafol. Are you tired of dealing with thinner hair but hesitant to use a hair supplement containing animal-derived ingredients? Look no further than Nutrafol. Their newest hair supplement uses 100% vegan natural ingredients to target root causes of thinning and promote healthy hair growth. So if you're like me, you're definitely going to want to check this product out because I know my hair has been thinning out lately and it's a little sad. But if you want to check out Nutrafol, you want to know what are they? Who are they? So Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand. And it is physician formulated with 100% drug free ingredients. While stress and styling habits can contribute to poor hair health in many women, a plant-based diet can create nutrient gaps that further impact hair growth. So Nutrafol didn't just remove non-vegan ingredients from the women's formula. Instead, they identified other clinically tested 100% vegan ingredients that naturally optimize the body's own collagen production. With consistent daily use, Nutrafol Women's Vegan Hair Growth Supplement promotes visibly less hair shedding, visibly thicker hair volume, and hair that grows faster, longer, and stronger. Don't we all want that? So take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code HEALTHY. So find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com promo code healthy. That's Nutrafol.com promo code healthy. Check it out, you guys. Like this idea of, I think when you're single, especially if you're in a smaller town or you're in the, kind of the Bible Belt, you have all these huge friend groups and you're all single. It's just not real life. I mean, it's, that's how it is in Dallas. Yeah. yeah. It's not real life to maybe when you're all married, maybe, but when you're married, you're not just going to be constantly around. You're, you're going to be with married friends. And so I think that like, if you like a girl, like for me, like I asked out one of my friends that was a girl in our friend group and it didn't work out and it, yeah, it did change the dynamic of the friend group. But that was like a risk I was like willing to take because I'm at the end of the day. Which I think is cool. Yeah. It's like you should eventually, you know, either stop confusing the girl. I think that's the thing. It's like too many dudes are so confusing. So confused. They're so flirty. They're messing around with you. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. So a girl thinks like, oh, he ha he likes me. And then he's like, no. Yeah. Or he's too scared to mess with the friendship dynamic. So he's not willing to ask you out. But we are no like you and I are guilty of that. Like totally. we're not sitting here like saying that like we weren't ever like that. So, but I think but. what, um, why boundaries matter is that, and also just healthy and mature people is that even if it doesn't work out like mature people, cause I know there's, uh, there's one specific person that I'm thinking of in my friend group that does ask the girls out a lot. And even though they don't work out, all of them still remain friends. Does it make it a little bit more weird? Sure. But I think it's kind of weird if you let it be weird. And I think I'm impressed that he's willing to do that. And then they all still stay friends. So I think it's almost like as mature adults, hopefully you date well and you leave people better than you found them to where if it doesn't work out, it's not always a super awkward, like, oh, and I have to see him again. Like, I think the best case scenario is dating your friend. But right. If, but if you're, I, I kind of disagree. If you're a dude who keeps asking every girl out in your friend group, eventually, like, that's why I never really did that. Only, I I only, like, one girl that was in our friend group, I, I would always go outside the friend group because I was always worried that, like, I see a lot of girls, especially, you know, and probably what, what does that mean? Dallas, <laughs> that can hurt guys' reputation because oh, yeah. they had... Maybe the guy, you know, took too long to respond. And all of a sudden she told everybody that he's horrible. And then he's trying to go on dates and it's like, he has a bad reputation now. And so I think that's why guys are shy too. Cause girls are ruthless. They're mean sometimes. Yeah, you for know? sure. So. Yeah. I think it's kind of iffy because I mean, someone always ends up liking somebody because yeah. like, I remember my pastor saying growing up, he's like, if you and the person you hated were stuck on an Island, 
you would eventually oh, yeah. end up you're liking each other love. and you fall in love 100%. and you would be doing the nasty. So I'm like, <laughs> is it good? That's some tea, girl. I made him some iced coffee. Dude, if you're on the stranded island, who's getting, who's marrying you? You just make a covenant with the Lord. You do? Yeah. The palm tree marries it's, you or something. It's, no, it's like uh, you get to the ocean and it's like a dolphin. You know, because dolphins have like a huge frontal vortex. Vortex? <laughs> is that the right word? <laughs> I think it's cortex. 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 Cortex sounded right. Anyway, okay, it's a, mess, a messy situation. I did pull you guys on uh, real threads. Quick, real quick. What? So Adam and Eve. Oh. So Adam and Eve were the first two humans on earth. Yes. Correct? So they had two kids. And? Baby, we know how this happened. It's a little sus. It's a little Arkansas. It's a little... <laughs> It's a little Mississippi. <laughs> hey, we're going to Mississippi tonight. Tonight, dude. I'm going to see some families there. <laughs> <laughs> dude. But that's messed up. Yeah, we I know. Gotta, it's pretty messed up. That's the first thing I'm asking. But it's about. like, how did the population expand with just their family? Well, I'm going to hmm. get up to the pearly gates and he's going to say, well done, my faithful servant. And I'm going to go, hey, Jesus, come here real quick. <laughs> Let me talk. <laughs> so Cain and Abel. Wait. Yeah. yeah, it was Cain and Abel. Yeah, your donkey. Okay. <laughs> so funny story, guys. I had a donkey, two donkeys named Cain and Abel. And um, eventually, so Cain, I don't know if I can say this on a podcast. What? Cain was in love with Abel. They were brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. He was in love. We eventually had to get rid of Cain because he wouldn't stop messing around with Abel. <laughs> I'm not joking. He was just doing what donkeys do. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what happens when he was you, getting a little, it was our, a little humpy, huh? Yeah. Anyways, a little humpy and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not cutting We're this. Done. We're not cutting this. I'm dead. Okay. okay. Can we go back to the conversation? Yeah. Let me just. Well, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, wrap that up. So a lot of you guys say <sighs> no, but they say there has to be boundaries, boundaries, has boundaries, boundaries. So everyone's saying there well, has to be boundaries. Boundaries now. You will <clears throat> be so thankful for your boundaries now when you're in a relationship. Yeah. Because her and I had to like. We had to figure this out. Had to figure some of this out because we both had close friends that were lot, of the opposite yeah. sex, and it's not like we were ever jealous, but it's like, hey, other people just don't get the same amount of access into your life once you're in a relationship. And yeah. especially when you're married, you know, you're not having dudes, you know, because the home, like, again, guys know guys who are playing the long run and you're kind of like, hey, bro, like I get, I get, I get your relationship that you had prior, but it's different now. And, uh, but anyway, that'll be. No, I think that's exactly true. Like that is something we had to navigate is that I had some really close guy friends that I would hang out with and travel with all the time. And that complicated some things. And so I realized I'm like, I feel like I had good boundaries, but I could have had better boundaries. And um, it shouldn't be that messy when you get into a relationship. So, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I think you yeah, do yourself a service now of like trying to honor your guy friends and honoring yourself and your future spouse now mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get complicated when you get into a relationship. Cause that was something we had to navigate was like, oh, we both have friends of the opposite sex. And like, how does this work now? Mm -hmm. And you become my priority. You become my only guy that I get attention from and all those things. So, but I will say last note on this is that if you know somebody is in love with you or a guy has confessed his feelings to you or vice versa, it's kind of unloving to keep playing games with them or keep leading them yeah. on. Like, cause one of my friends, her guy friend straight up admitted, like I'm in love with you. And she kept hanging out while with she him was in a relationship. while she was in a relationship. But then she was like, no, I love you like your brother. And they kept staying friends. I'm like, that's a little weird, but also like unloving to him because you know, he likes you and yeah. you're kind of like playing games with his heart. Eventually when you get engaged and you're about to get married, you realize that you don't need these backup plans. I think a lot of people keep people close just in case their relationship doesn't work out. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, I, I didn't abandon my friends. We're not saying abandon your friends, abandon your community, abandon your guy or mm -hmm. girl friendships. But what we're saying is, is if you know, one of your friends likes you while you're in a relationship yeah. you just need to have you just need to have good boundaries yeah we're not saying like oh you can't have any friends with the opposite sex but it's like yeah. but that changes when you get into a relationship for sure as it should as it should anyways i say anyways too much anyways okay caleb let's let's talk about you interview me i'm on the tonight okay, show tell with us janine and Mapua. we haven't talked about this and i think people don't know this yet really about you and maybe you did mention this but 
You went to Hillsong College in Australia. A, why did you go there? And B, why did you leave? And what was your experience like there? And C, you've now seen the documentary. So That's a heavy question. I know. Is this the time to talk about it? <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I think we can... De- My mom texted us. I know. I'm like looking at Regina. <laughs> My dad texted me too. That's Uh-oh, awkward. Oh, interesting. Why did you go <laughs> to Hillsong College? <laughs> um, okay. So I moved. I lived in New York City. Uh, in 2018, it was going to business school there. And I found, I grew up a Christian. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. I'm sorry. I grew up, uh, grew up a Christian, but my faith really changed when I was at, when I lived in New York City and I was going to Hillsong, New York. And honestly, it was amazing. I had a little community group and it's really hard to find really godly Christian friends in New York City. <laughs> what? I don't know. I'm having a laughing attack. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, i'm good is it the way like you were like no it was like it know. was like at church when i was like uh, i hey, think you you're you're so me? cute and expressive <laughs> <laughs> so i live in new york city and i saw like a uh, a trailer of hillsong college in australia and i kind of have always had a dream of living in sydney australia and i was like that looks amazing and the way they the way they advertised it made you feel like you were going to be the like, king of the earth. No, just a great leader. And you were going to learn about God and you were going to surf every single day. And you were going to l- live amongst the kangaroos and the koalas. And, and, um, you were going to become one, you know, with God and one with the, the Aussies. And so I ended up applying, um, uh, I paid for it. I, I worked a job for about four months in a sales position and closed some deals, you know, which was unbelievable because I was actually in those four months. Go, I baby. could pay for my tuition for three years at Hillsong. So I bought a three year visa. Oh. I was like, wow, I, you were committed. I was committed. Wow. And, and so I went and um, my biggest thing, I'm on this like walk in my life right now where I, I just don't want to hop on the, tr- the bandwagon of like, hating on a church yeah um but i obviously left for a reason um i left because i saw some things that i i didn't appreciate and i didn't like and i don't think that that is necessarily hillsong's fault i mean there's bad people amongst every organization yeah and so for me personally i was three months in again i was supposed to be there for three years COVID had just hit um i was confused by a, a couple different ways that the college was handling students the way how much we were working expectations that I had going in just weren't what I thought was going to happen. Mm. And uh, so they like over promised something and didn't deliver over promise. You kind of feel like, um, I mean, I hate using this cause again, I go to a church here and I'm not like better or anything, but it did feel a little cultish. Um, yeah, there was a lot of weird verbiages it was an interesting culture. Again, I left with some of great friends. I, I think a lot of Hillsong leaders have the best hearts. There are so many amazing pastors. The worship team is is great. Um, but at the core, I think we could sit here for a couple of hours. Maybe we could do a different podcast on this um, so I can carefully say what I want to say because I, I want to yeah. be careful. And like my biggest fear is getting up to heaven or whatever. I, I just don't want to hate something that is God like, or God is still using God is still using and has used for many, many people. Yeah. But I will say it took me a couple years to really get rid of a lot of bitterness. Um, and, um, cynical cynicalism, C- cynicism. I think Cyn- it's like cynical. So cynicalism. No, I think it's cynicism. Yeah. I had, yeah, I had to work through, I didn't go to, you know, I left Hillsong. I didn't go, I was like still a believer and like followed Jesus with all my heart. But like, yeah, I stopped, you know, going to church for a good year because I was just was like, I needed some time to like regroup and rethink like, what is the American gospel? What does this look like? Yeah. What is even church? So it was the hardest, best thing that I ever like have been through. Because it's like realigned my focus on like, mm. okay, what does true ministry look like? What does following Jesus look like? And you know, what? it's simply, what are you doing when people aren't looking? How are you yeah. leading your family? Um, you saw, I saw so many leaders 
um, were more focused on what their ministry looked like besides how they treat, treated their wife. Wow. And your wife is your first ministry. Exactly. Wow. And so uh, I left with a lot of good friends, but I also left with a lot of disappointment and a lot of, um, even to this day, just like very disappointed, which is why when you take on the, the leadership of being a pastor, you are held to such a standard that even God is like, hey, if you want to be a teacher of my word, you know, you'll be double held accountable. Yeah. yeah. It's I a mean, big responsibility because I think that's what's so scary is that you have the power to persuade people to love the Lord or to completely fall away from him. And we should do an episode on church hurt because yeah. the amount of people that DM me talking about yeah. church hurt is insane. You're talking to Mr. Church hurt right here. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love me some Jesus. I have such a strong relationship with God um, but I have seen it all. So to kind of wrap that question up, um, yeah, I was Mr. Church hurt, but if, so if you have church hurt and you've been to one of these big mega churches or big, you know, you, I mean, you know, the type, you know, the type of church I'm talking about mm -hmm. and you, every time you go in or every time you listen to worship music or every time you see one of these pastors that like, you get that like nauseous feeling in your stomach of like, this is fake. This is, this isn't real. I want you to know that you're so valid in thinking that, but at the end of the day, Jesus wants your heart and he doesn't want a bitter heart and he doesn't want a prideful heart. And so the quicker you can forgive, the quicker God is going to forgive you, the quicker, I mean, ultimately he's forgiven you. So why should we not forgive others? No matter what anyone yeah. has done to you um, and you're going to be robbing yourself of a lot of joy and a lot of life if you hold on to that bitterness because that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do is yeah. to stay in church hurt for the rest of your life. Now, that doesn't mean not to have boundaries. That doesn't mean... Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. That doesn't, doesn't mean you dismiss bad behavior or bad yeah. treatment or bad anything. Like, yeah. Yeah, maybe that looks like you have a house church for the rest of your life. I don't know. I think you should have church. You should be in a community. You should be serving. But I don't think it looks like this american square of if you're mm -hmm. not doing this you're not a christian yeah i think that's why i was talking about that book um from david platt called what's it called american gospel well no it talks about the american gospel it's called radical and it talks radical all faith. about this and it is so so amazing and i highly recommend but i mean it's hard because it's just like christians are supposed to be a representation of christ so it's hard when they steward that poorly, that's going to cause some people to stumble and to be like, wait, if that's what your Christ looks like, yeah. I want nothing to do with it. You know, and that's what's really hard. When you mix capitalism with, with church, it's just difficult. That sounds, I'm a big capitalist guy. Like I'm Mr. Capitalism. Like I'm as conservative economically as it comes. Um, but it gets, it gets, it gets tough when you churches start making millions and millions of dollars and you're trusting the leadership to to um, use it well. Well, yeah, and they're, the, the church is making millions of dollars and the pastor's house is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? Yeah, but it's like, at the end of the day, like, we have nice things. We're not necessarily pastors. Um, so I just... I don't want to, yeah. like, roast that, but I, I just think, like, as long as they are under the impression of like, okay, people's tithe money should be going towards blessing people and advancing God's kingdom versus like advancing themselves or private jets or whatever, yeah. you know? We we go to an amazing church here in Dallas. In the beginning, it did have kind of a Hillsong feel, uh, but we know the pastors. We've seen how amazing they are and how yeah. they lead everything, and it's been amazing. So we are in a church, uh, but I totally understand i think i think what pisses ticks me off the most is like <laughs> people who have a lot of church hurt and you have a lot of christians who who are like oh my gosh get over your church hurt get over your church hurt and it's like i think that a lot of people until you've been in it until you've actually like a lot of people haven't been in that washing machine of serving 60 hour weeks and being manipulated spiritually like until you've had that it's really hard to empathize with people who have gone through that. That's and such so, a good point, baby. I'm yeah. glad you said that because to be honest, I have not experienced massive church hurt. I've definitely seen some things and I've been hurt in minor ways, but I've not experienced it to that extent. 
And I'm glad that you can speak to that when that's something that I can't totally speak yeah. to. And I think you're absolutely right. Like I, I can't totally empathize. I can empathize, but I can't fully understand. Yeah. So that's good. It's a good point. You have any other questions? Yeah. So something that other people wanted to know is being a guy, like obviously they've heard my perspective on like being a girl and waiting well and how to prepare to be a wife and all the things. What, it, what did you do as a dude to prepare to be a good boyfriend in your singleness? What are things that you worked on as a man to prepare to be a good husband and a good boyfriend? That's a really, really good question. I think you can start, I'll say four things. So the first thing, um, if you're a girl and you're looking at a guy, you should see who he surrounds himself with. And I think that's for me, I've always been the type where like, I want to surround myself by men who honestly are, I think are better than me, who are better than me, almost spiritually, financially, or healthier than me. Uh, my friends hold me so accountable uh, in every area of my life to where sometimes it's like, gosh, would you guys just like, let me live. Yeah, it gets annoying after a while. Yeah, and so I think, I think that that like prepared me super well. Cause like all my friends are 28, 29, 30. I have my, one of my mentors here, he's 30 years old. Um, I am friends with 40 and 50 year olds. Um, and so I was just constantly like, what does it mean to be a good husband? What does it mean to like, you lead a family of five and you own your own, your own business and you're a CEO entrepreneur and you do all these things. I'm like, can I, can we go, can we go get a coffee? Like before I met you, um, I think a week prior, I had like three coffees lined up that week with three different like older men who were in their big career that I met through work. And I just was like, hey, I'm 20 at the time. I'm 22, 23. And I'm like, hey, can we meet for coffee? I have like 10 questions I want to ask you. And I remember meeting a guy at Capitol Grill here in Dallas. I met him at the gym, like multi, multi crypto millionaire guy. And um, super awkward, but I was like, I want to pick your brain. So we went to lunch. That lunch turned into another lunch. And um, I haven't seen him since, but we got two lunches. And I got a wealth of knowledge in those two lunches. And um, But it, I also got to see a lot of men not living their lives the way that I want to live their lives. Maybe their finances look good, but their relationship looked horrible. And so I would say that's like the first thing. That's so good, babe. Yeah. You genuinely do that. Like, I think... I'm even just sitting here looking at you and I'm like, I respect the crap out of this man because it, you really are somebody that you live in the light and like that. I was so impressed. Like from day one, you have always surrounded yourself with good people. You've never been afraid to ask for help. You've always been like, what's it going to hurt? Like, I'm going to reach out to this guy. And like, I think some men might be a little prideful or scared or even just like, they just don't know to do that or have the drive to do that. And I've always been so impressed because from day one, you're like, I'm meeting this guy. I'm getting coffee. This guy I'm getting like, I get scared to do that. And I am so impressed and challenged by you. Thanks, babe. That means a lot. I think every guy wants to be respected at the end of the day. And knowing that you do just like gives me so much fire to like, I feel like you run through a freaking brick wall, dude. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say second thing. Now it's kind of heavy, but the p word i don't, mm -hmm. don't want to say it because i think it, it could get like demonetized on youtube p-o-r-n yeah I, you got to it's get corn a hold of that um as a man because you you're just gonna you're gonna be addicted to variety so i remember being a junior in high school or senior in high school and calling one of my friends and i was like hey i don't want to do this anymore and from then on like it's just been a constant accountability thing within my friends. It's allowed me, like I look at you and I'm like, man, she's so freaking beautiful. And so like, I, I'm like so lucky. Like I'm with, in my opinion, the prettiest girl ever, you know, and I'm so attracted to her. And, and it's like, I don't know if a man can get there if he's watching corn, you know, Every single week, you know? Sorry, that sounded funny. No. <laughs> How are you going to have eyes for one woman the rest of your life when every single night you throw that blanket over your head and, you know, you, uh, you're watching You're corn. watching 30 other yeah. different women's faces. You know what's really sad is that one of my friends, her boyfriend broke up with her and ended up admitting, like, he was constantly comparing her to the women he was seeing online. Yeah. And he couldn't get himself to be attracted to her as much because he had trained himself for writing and was looking at all these other women. Yeah. How I, sad is I, that? I, I want to be like, I don't want to shame 
Uh, that's my biggest thing is like, I don't want to shame men if you're listening or even women if you're listening. And that's like a yeah, part of women your story. struggle too. There is so much grace and so much forgiveness and no one, a Christian is not going to look at you like you're this, you're not this horrible person. If that's your, your story, because it was my story. Um, and mine in the past, but I'm, I'm speaking directly to men like women. I can't speak to that cause I'm not a woman and I, I, I want to speak to men. You got to get a hold of it. Like you just got to, like, I think we can, as Christians, sometimes, you know, extend a lot of grace, but not, not yeah, speak sure. the reality of the consequences. The reality of the consequences are extreme. It's, it, it's really bad in my opinion. I think, I, I think dudes are walking around here like they're zombies. And it it I don't think women will understand what that does to a guy's brain when that's happening. And so I would say that's number two um, is, is that issue. I'd say number three. I love that you came prepared. You have a list. Thanks, babe. I love lists. Um, I would say number three is like, are you ready? Like internally, you got to ask yourself, like, are, am I am I ready to be like committed to? to a woman or to spiritually spiritually lead in a relationship for the rest of my life. Um, and if you're not in the place, you're going to drag someone else like through the mud. If you don't know what you want, like don't get into a relationship trying to figure out if you know it, it like it's not black and white. But don't figure it out while you're in the relationship. Figure out before. What are my, what do I want to see in a woman? What do I want? Yeah, you're like non-negotiables. Yeah. Like what am I? What are you looking for? Like, who are you going to be? Can I, can I, can I commit? Can I commit for the rest of my life? And not saying that you have to like get there before you start dating someone, but I'm almost like, don't date if you're not in a place to date. Um, so that, you know, what's funny though, is like, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I randomly saw it, but someone commented on my TikTok video and they said, I can't wait for the day until he cheats on her. And first of all, how, how messed up is that? Yeah. But secondly, I know in my heart of hearts, you would never do that. And I'm banking on your character of what I've seen now, the conversations, who you are now, how you treat me now, how you look, what you look at now. Like, in, even if you may look, I know you will never cheat on me. And I'm just like, because I have seen your self-control and who you are in the dating season and even before you know so we are going to finish this race i am tired of i'm tired of like seeing marriages collapse and fail and i think that that's like so like my story i come from a divorced family i love my dad to death i love my mom to death they're amazing people um they raised me so freaking well um and they're both you know happily remarried but i'm just like janine like we're committing to life with each other like when divorce is not an option um an affair isn't just like we're not doing that I, I think it's so now it's so you're just used to that being the reality of like that's going to happen and right right if you go into a marriage like kind of having that as like oh that could be like you're you're having one little sneaky creek yeah. door into your relationship that it could happen i had a mentor tell me this he said you know he and this was like this spoke to me and he was like you know, David fell. David, you know, was a man after God's own heart and he fell. And there was a lot of grace extended to David. And he was like, but why, why put yourself under the box of David? You can finish the race. How great Amen. is that? Yeah. You can actually get through life like my grandpa, yeah. you know. And they've been married for how long? They're 76. They got married when they were 19. They're so cute. Yeah. So almost 60 years, That's 58 so years. Bonkers. So yeah, like we can finish the race. You can grow old and die happily married. It's possible. It's possible. You can do it. But that's not what society and culture says. No, it's like get it's a divorce. A and it's just like if they don't make you happy, just leave. It's like, like wait, what? I mean, what you're doing to your children, it, like when you are divorced, you, it is hard. The realities of, you know, what a divorce does is tough. Like, I'm just like, let's do this. And let's do it well. But the thing is, too, is like there will be times when your partner does not make you happy. There yeah. will be times where it does get hard. But that's why you're committing to a covenant and to laying your life down and to choosing to love them the way that Jesus loved you. Because Jesus didn't quit on you. Jesus didn't leave you even when you turned your back and you sinned and you cheated on him. He still chose you and he still pursued you. And it's just like and we both go into marriage with that mindset of like yeah. there's going to be times where you're going to piss me off. Yeah. And vice versa. <laughs> yeah. 
but we're still going to choose each other. But what a gift as like a man you could give your wife to know that she doesn't have to go to bed at night thinking or wondering if that's something you would ever do. Yeah. Like it's a free gift mm -hmm. that you can give. Um, not saying like, yeah, you're going to be attracted to other men. Like people just don't not get attractive right. just right when you get married. But like, I can trust your character to know that, Hey, like, man, you're, you're committed to me. Like that dude, you know, might walk by, he might be a good looking dude, but I, at the end of the day, like I know you're not going to trade immediate gratification for a lifetime of, you know, regret, regret <laughs> or consequences or whatever. Which is, so, I think, something important that we, our Bible study, we're in this like, couple's Bible study. We talked all about um, sex last week, which was so great. And our pastor was talking about safeguards that they have in their relationship. And we we were just so intrigued by these because we were like, A, it's so cool to see a pastor living in the light, having these safeguards to know that he is the same on stage and off stage. But they talked about how they protect their marriage, of how their phones, like, they can always look at each other's phones. They always know what's going on. They... You know, what were the other safeguards they had? When a woman responds to a story like um, his Instagram, like he doesn't DM any girls. And I think that's like awesome. It's like, and I think a lot of people might, I, I see this a lot of like, oh, that's controlling or that's. Yeah, or that's it's, toxic. It's just removing even like the idea that someone can say something. For sure. We're removing any secrecy or any level of like, no, this is my thing. It's like, no, this is our thing, you know? Yeah. And mo multiple of our pastors, like their wives have access to their phones and they're well-known pastors where, you know, girls are DMing them all the time. And so they're like, our wives have access to everything. Yeah. I think in marriage, you just want to have like transparency is the best, most nothing. freeing thing. Yeah. Having nothing to hide is so great. Yeah. Like you can go and see anything at any time. And it's not that you'll even go in and check but it's like why not like what would you have to hide if you're partnered if you're if you're dating that's different but yeah. like i think if you're getting into marriage you should have access to everything everything it's like if your boy your husband his buddies are holding him accountable it's like you're now his wife and uh, that should be the biggest accountability and this is even a hot take but like finances yeah. like i know some couples that have different two different bank accounts and I've seen that absolutely yeah. destroy their relationship. Yeah. So even in our Bible study, they're talking about having one bank account. It's not my money. It's not his money. It's our money. It's God's money. God's money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, so yeah. yeah. Okay. What was the third the, thing on your list? The fourth thing. Or fourth? So something that I asked myself on our first date, and I think Jonathan Pakluda said this, like, can you cherish her? And I think I would, I would go on dates in my past and I would leave and be like, am I attracted to her? Am I, do I like her? I don't know, but she's so awesome. She meets the godly standards. And then I would ask myself, can I cherish this girl the way she would want to be cherished, the way she would want to be loved? And, and that was kind of my question of like, yeah, attraction isn't the biggest thing, but you need to be able to cherish the other person. And if you're not attracted to them, I'm sorry. I just, it's my take. Like, I don't know that you're going to be able to cherish them um, the way that they, they are going to want to feel loved and uh, adored. And so that was something that immediately from day one, I was like, I can cherish the heck out of this girl. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Yeah. Good job. Those are really good. Those were four on the on I know. I'm very impressed. Fly. Very, very impressed with you. Good job, babe. Like, what's the type of guy a girl should be waiting for? The type of girl a guy is looking for is a girl who is running her race sounds cliche but a girl who's genuinely running her race a girl who doesn't need the approval of and the like the validation from all these external factors whether they be guys or attention or or anything uh, their body their their job it's like at the core they're so themselves they are so it's almost like they're kind of intimidating because they're so secure in who they are um, it doesn't mean to have a false, like, arrogance to yourself, but it means that, like, hey, God is more important than you, and you're going to have to get through him to get to me. And I think having that spirit, guys sense it. We are, we are like, it's hard to explain. We are creatures. Spidey senses. You can sense a confident, godly woman. It's, like, from millions of miles away. And um, 
So lean into that really hard. I think what you should be looking for at the core is how does he speak about other people? How does he talk about other people? Four and foremost, like don't always rely on too much of like their reputation because you'll hear things, but like at the core, character will reveal itself and like really look at a man's character. Is his character above reproach? Is it is it haughty? Is it arrogant? Or is it mm-hmm. like spiritual confidence? And I, I would just say like, yeah, that's the typical answer. Like find the godliest guy you can know, like, the end of the day that's so good it's so true and i think sometimes too like you don't you don't got to do much most people out themselves like they just talk and you just observe all you're doing and dating and as a female and even as a dude whoever you're just observing i feel like but like I, without doing anything you're like who is this person i feel like girls though kind of want this you know bad this, guy not bad guy but they want a girl like a guy that you know they've been trained to like their whole lives. I don't know. Well, I talked about that. I think in my last podcast or the one about waiting well of just untraining ourselves for toxicity, because I think we do that because the good guys are so frustrated and the girls might be thinking, Oh, no guy asked me out. No guy asked me out. It's like the good guys are saying the same thing. Y'all's girls nights. When y'all sit at the table and y'all crap on dudes for two hours, while guys are passive. <laughs> guys don't ask us out. Guys are scared. Scared. They're so scared of you right. guys. They're so scared of what you guys are gonna say. Cause y'all sit around these these dining tables with your you know wine glasses talking about why Chad is horrible. And when there's you know Brian who loves Jesus, and I get there needs to be you need to be attracted to this guy or whatever. That's important. But I'm also like, give Brian a chance, dude. Give Brian a chance. Well, I talked about this yesterday in my Instagram story. And then it's literally, you know, first Samuel 16, where a man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And I think sometimes on the outward appearance, you're like, I would never. But then he's like, but why? You know, and he's a great guy. And, or maybe you don't think I would never. Maybe you're like, you know what? I wouldn't typically. I could give, give it a shot. But I'm also like, I don't like the uh, just date anybody if they're godly. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when a guy, when you know, when girl, like if you're a girl and you know this guy is in love with you from date two and there's not that chase, you're attracted to this dude. You like him, but then the chase is removed. And then all of a sudden you don't get that same thrill. You don't get the same dopamine. And then you start asking yourself, I don't, really, I don't know if I really like this guy. I'm not, I'm not tossing and turning that night. Like I know he likes me. I promise you. Six months in, nine months in, you're going to way more appreciate that 100%. than you will the tossing and turning and the serot- you know, serotonin and the, you know, the, dopamine. the dopamine or whatever. I'm sweating. Your hat looks funky on camera. It's okay. Okay. No, I think that's a really good point. We can wrap up on that, but I think that's very true. I think that's what you did to me is you were like, I like you. And then I was like, wait, no games. And you were like, no games. And I was like, <laughs> what the heck? And I wasn't up at night being like, is he going to text me? Is he going to call me? Like, yeah, I knew you were a clear, kind gentleman. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Do you have any like last like this last? Let's go for five more minutes because because I think that, <sighs> okay. I think we need to, to wrap up. We have on, five minutes on left. something that makes people laugh. What are we going to do? I just I genuinely. So like my dream in our life, like you ever think about that? We're in our 20s. We have our whole Not for life. long for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Dude, you are, you're dating a young stallion. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to, I can't. I have like eight months left of being this age. I can't wait to like look back at these podcasts when we're like 50? 60s, you know, and we're watching. Man, we're Do you just, think the world's going to be here by that time? Don't you think Jesus is going to come back by then? I think Jesus is coming back. I don't know. What do you think he's going to look like? Jesus? Yeah. Um, I know he's got a thigh tattoo. That guy, he's risque. Jesus is a thigh tattoo? Yeah, read Revelation. Dude, Jesus does not go to Hillsong. <laughs> he does not have <laughs> no, a No, Hillsong people have thigh what? tattoos. You what? know they That's do. Why, that's why, that was the joke. Does not go to Hillsong? I said Jesus does not go to Hillsong, so he doesn't have a thigh, thigh tattoo. Huh? Do you not get the joke? No, baby. So you just Jesus said, does have a thigh you tattoo. You just said Jesus does have a thigh yeah. tattoo. And I said, no, Jesus does not go to Hillsong. So he doesn't have a thigh tattoo. Does that not make sense? But baby, he would go to Hillsong if he did have a thigh tattoo. Babe, 
The joke is, you, okay, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay, I get it. You said Jesus has a thigh tattoo, and I said no. Jesus does not go to Hillsong, so he doesn't have a thigh tattoo. What do you think we're gonna do in ten years? Like, what do you? Think? Uh, I hope I'm in heaven by then. No, babe. I'm so serious. Okay, I understand that, but they've been saying that. For okay, me. okay, okay, okay. In ten years, what do you think we're gonna be? I mean, I'm definitely gonna be a mom. I know that. Mama, I'm start calling you Mama. Mama J. I'm, I'm gonna have probably three kids and two cats by then. I'm gonna be so good at pickleball by then, dude. That's something we've been getting into pickleball, guys. Caleb is scarily good. Like you kind of freak me out. I played horrible today. You freak me out. Yeah, but we've been. I have to burp. We've been getting into pickleball. It's been so fun. Yeah, guys, we are pickleballers. And I'm a pickle if y'all you love are. pickleball, let us know. We might have some ideas in the future. Someone asked me today. What do I got to do to get into pickleball? Guys, we're going to help you out. I said, you just got to keep going, keep practicing, get the right paddle, have the right coach, and just keep playing. And know that, like, you're not going to be the greatest in the beginning. I knew this I wasn't. It's such a good workout, too. It's so, And it's a great way to bond and hang out with people, meet yeah. new people. We've met so many fun people. So the last, the last bit um, I will say to that is if you're in a relationship and your activities are only coming home and watching TV – you're losing out on so many. I think it's like, I was listening to Jay Shad and he was like, you need like three or four things. Oh yeah, he talked about that, in, yeah. In a relationship, like you need to have an activity, an exercise you do together. You need to have a, you know, artistic thing you do together, but like something outside of Netflix, your yeah. relationship will soar. Well, also, yeah, it's easy to go home. Like that's so easy. It's it's so passive to just go watch TV and cook a dinner or whatever or order in. So I think, yeah, that's a really great point is finding something fun to do with your partner if you're in a relationship. And I think that's ours is pickleball. And we love to cook together. We love you guys. We're actually off to Mississippi this weekend. Um, when I post this, it'll already, that trip will already have happened. So check out my Instagram. When are because you posting this? Next Tuesday. This Tuesday? Yeah. So that's not next Tuesday. Well, this upcoming Tuesday. So this Tuesday. I went up. On a Tuesday. You are so attractive. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you for coming to my and our <laughs> podcast. Hey. It's all I ever I start wanted. A, do you th it's all I ever wanted. It's all I really ever <laughs> wanted. wanted. I feel like the girl in the relationship right now. I know. I don't <laughs> like this. I feel like I'm emasculating you. <laughs> Put your arm around You know me. what I want to do? What do you want to do? I think like year one of marriage, I start my own podcast too. And I just rant for two hours. Y'all, like this man can rant. What if I did start my you own podcast? You and Grant podcast, should do one called about? Grant and Rant. Hey, now that's a I bar. Think, I, he wants to start a podcast with my brother-in-law. I think that's so funny. I want, I don't know. These two will literally talk your ear off. So I say send it. Sometimes our topics are very girly here. But uh, we need a man's perspective sometimes. Sometimes we just... Listen, guys, sometimes you just need an older brother to, to come alongside and say, he's not for you. He, he is <laughs> a loser. Sometimes you just need that. His name is, is Liam the Loser. Le okay. Well, that was stupid. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to you this hour a, long. You have such a podcast voice. <laughs> Do the not. way, the way, like, we'll get off the podcast. She goes, okay, so, like, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, so what do you want to? Hey, it's me. I'm Jimmy. like, uh, wait, baby, guess that. Guess, guess what? What? Back in the day, I had such a low voice that I would prank call people as a guy. They dead A thought I was a man. One time I called Kiss FM and I made it onto the dating show. And I said, hi guys, my name is um, Steve and I work at Clay Cooley. They seriously believed I was a guy. The girl was like, how old are you, Steve? I was like, uh, I'm um, 20. And I freaked out. I mispronounced my job. I said, Clay Cooley. <laughs> <laughs> and it aired on the radio. I'm a little mortified right now. It's so embarrassing. You sound a little, that sounded a little too good. I know. Dude. But babe, I was like 12 years old when I did that. How did you have that deeper hey, voice at 12? <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Chad. I'm in Sigma Nu. Now that you're getting about married, to you can just do this do weird <laughs> thing. I'm, I'm about to steal your girl. <laughs> you sound like she's the man. You literally, you oh sound like, yeah. You sound like her. Yeah. Sebastian. I made him watch that movie. It's he one of the it. worst movies he, to it's ever. It's literally my horrible. top five favorite movies. What's up, ladies? Holla at your girl. Okay, anyway. No. We love not, you guys. We have to go. I have a, No, baby. I have a meeting in the next 10 minutes. I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on today's episode of...
happy and healthy. It's all I ever wanted. Thank you guys. And we love you. Let us know what you thought about today's episode and comment. Can guys and girls really be just friends? And is it all you ever really wanted? (laughs) Stop. We love y'all. We're off to Mississippi. See you guys next Tuesday for another episode. Happy healthy until then. Say happy anniversary. Bye. <laughs> Little, uh, also, real guy. quick. Wait, thumbnail. Blow chow. Blue chow. Blow chow. I guess no one knows what that means. Yeah, and now they do. Okay, say bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>